Growing up, I think everyone can understand the feeling of wishing to be an adult, of rushing through these years of childhood so you can be independent of your parents and free of school. And you'll be hard pressed to find the group of children more determined to grow up than the cast of the Idol Master Cinderella Girls U149. The girls that make up the third entertainment division's U149 unit are tired of being beholden to the adults. Despite their young age, ranging from 9 to 12, these idols are serious about proving their worth and making it onto the same stage their dazzling seniors stand on. Of the group, Arisu Tachibana sticks out as one of the most mature members. She chides their adult producer when he screws up, cares for the younger members, and even does the accounting for their events. But she's not as put together as she may seem. In fact, she's incredibly insecure, to the point where she isn't even sure if her family loves her, despite how obviously her parents do. However, they're often too busy to spend time with her, so Arisu craves their praise. She puts on the facade of the smart and talented girl who can operate independently, the girl that her parents love to brag about and reward. But there's a side of Arisu that desperately wants to yearn for more time with their parents, a side that is childish, worried, and scared. And so, Arisu spends many of her episodes staring at mirrors, wondering when will her reflection show who she is inside. Iconic Disney songs aside, U149 has a ton of reflective imagery. The mirror in U149 is an example of a motif, a recurring narrative element that supports the main theme or storyline. So when I see a mirror or some sort of reflection appear numerous times, I know that this is the creator cluing me in on something important. U149 takes it a step further by also incorporating this motif into its cinematography. It adds an additional layer of depth by reinforcing the theme of reflecting on yourself, revealing the self you hide behind the mask, and seeing yourself and others through its visual language. That unification of thematics and visuals under this motif really sets apart the cinematography of the Idol Master U149 from other shows this year. Growing up, I think everyone can understand the feeling of wishing to be an adult, of slowing down and wishing you were more put together at your age so you can feel as smart as your parents seemed or as capable as your college diploma says you are, and you'd be hard pressed to find an individual more concerned than our producer. This new responsibility thrust upon him has our producer stressed to not only make the most of this opportunity for his career, but to also satisfy the ambitious girls of U149. In the end, the producer manages to help our idols debut, but his experience with imposter syndrome positions him as a perfect foil for Arisu. From episode 1, these two characters are established as reflections of one another. Arisu is an incredibly capable girl for her age. The producer struggles with some of the basic aspects of his job. Arisu's parents continuously acknowledge how independent she is. The producer's colleagues keep telling him to grow up. It often feels like their roles are reversed, where Arisu is doing as much managing and caretaking as he is. Yet, these characters both grapple with the same question. What is the difference between a kid and a grown-up? In episode 11, we get our answer. Arisu runs away. She's too afraid of asking her parents for their permission to debut as an idol. After an all-hands effort by her parents and the rest of the group, the producer finally finds Arisu on the rooftop of their office building, overwhelmed and anxious. She fears that if she isn't the perfect and mature daughter, that her parents wouldn't want her anymore. The producer counters that her parents would never abandon her over that sentiment. And even as adults, they can still have dreams. After all, he still dreams of making U149 famous. But she can't trust his words because she's seen the producer fail to meet her expectations many times since episode 1. You're supposed to be a grown-up, she yells. And man, that hurts him. The producer can only admit to his faults. But even so, he adamantly wants to support Arisu's dream. And it's when Arisu sees the producer being emotional, crying over his own powerlessness, that she finally gets it. She remembers a time when she caught her own mother, someone who she respects immensely, crying while lying in bed together. And all the little memories of how even her mother struggled with studying and work begin to trickle into her mind like raindrops. The disappointments and setbacks Arisu has felt since embarking on her idol career, the frustration of not being able to meet expectations, her mother and the producer have both experienced those even as adults. There isn't that big of a difference between the two of them. There isn't much of a difference between kids and adults after all. 
That revelation encourages her to finally open up and indulge in some of her immature thoughts. And just as how the producer's tears moved Arisu, so too were Arisu's parents touched. They were similarly able to open up to Arisu, allowing their relationship to mend. With the producer, Arisu was finally able to see her worries reflected on a respectable adult, and that revelation pushed her to overcome her insecurities and flaws. The producer is a wonderful implementation of a foil character. His differences with Arisu generated conflict that deepened our understanding of Arisu's character and also served as a different twist on the show's theme. Not a kid trying to be an adult, but an adult trying to be an adult. Now that we know about the show's themes and the contextual relationship between Arisu and the producer, we can start talking about how U149's visuals support its theme. From the opening scene, it is evident that mirrors will be a common motif in the show. In episode 1, there is the mirror in Arisu's room that she uses every morning, there is the traffic mirror that the show cleverly uses to extend the shot of Arisu running home, and there is the mirror in her training room, where we get to see Arisu's bright smile. As discussed beforehand, the mirror is going to be an important visual metaphor to support the thesis that Arisu and the producer are reflections of one another. And so, the show starts laying out the groundwork now, establishing sources of reflection that we will need for episode 11 later on. U149 takes this idea and begins to seed that comparison in your mind in less obvious ways. There are fade-in match cuts that build the connection between Arisu and the producer for the viewer. There are shots where they are clearly opposed to highlight their differences. But the highlight of the episode, and maybe the whole season, is when Arisu and the producer have their first one-on-one -on -one discussion. The cast is walking along a street after training, but the producer and Arisu lag behind at the back of the group. Though they are walking next to each other, their positions on opposite sides of the screen emphasize the emotional distance between them. However, once the producer enthusiastically shares his love of idols, the two open up to one another and bridge the gap between each other in the profile shot. He climbs a nearby staircase and invites her to come along in his dream to produce an idol group. Though skeptical of his skills, Arisu nonetheless agrees to join him, and ascends the stairs too. And then in one of the most memorable shots of the season, Arisu leaps off the stairs. Her visage is duplicated by the windows of the nearby building, creating an infinite number of Arisus, representing an infinite number of possibilities. Your debut concert is just the beginning, and the girls of U149 have all the time in the world for their infinite number of paths in their future. Now let me skip ahead to episode 11, where their intertwined arcs finally reach their climax. This episode closely mirrors episode 1 in terms of not only centering Arisu and the producer in the narrative, but also the shot composition. Many of the exact camera angles and locations used in episode 1 are reutilized in episode 11. Not only does this refocus the story back on Arisu and the producer, but it also creates a sense that we've returned to address the unanswered questions from the start of the show. And the reuse of shots also draws attention to how different Arisu feels this time around. She's frowning more than ever in these shots, and that lingering fear of confronting her parents about her debut weighs on her. Changes in color, saturation, and brightness punctuate that shift in mood from episode 1. Reiterating these shots places attention on the differences and makes them stick out more clearly to the viewer. Throughout the episode, the mirror motif comes into full effect. The sheer versatility in the show's directing is overwhelming. For example, this shot of Arisu's eyes in which the mirror containing her reflection is captured. The placement of the mirror in the reflection of the eyes creates a subjective impression. Combined with the growing fisheye lens, the scene creates the sense that Arisu's perspective of herself is a little off. The rooftop has puddles scattered throughout, visually fragmenting the characters and highlighting their separation. They also capture small character acting moments like the producer squeezing his fist in frustration, but fails to capture Arisu's face as she peels her mask off. Arisu looks at the window of a clothing store, but instead of her reflection, she sees her mother's outfit. This scene showcases her frustration at her immaturity in comparison to her busy mother. These reflective slats on the ceiling of a building distort the image as Arisu runs by, perhaps reiterating how Arisu is unable to see herself clearly due to her own self-doubts. There's also creative liberties taken around the idea of reflection, such as the reversal of positions between Arisu and her goldfish. This shot, also used in episode 1, punctuates Arisu's loneliness when she comes home and her parents are still out. The rippling surface positioned right by her head gives us a little insight into the inner turbulence she hides from others. It also establishes how alone she feels by placing the camera inside the fishbowl surrounded by several fish. It portrays her as an outsider in her own home. But then in her insert song, 
Arisu is placed in the fishbowl at the mercy of the stormy seas while her giant-sized goldfish swims freely. Despite the change, it still points out how alone Arisu is. Now that the camera is out of the fishbowl, Arisu looks trapped and isolated. At this moment when Arisu has run away, the huge goldfish brings attention to how small and powerless Arisu feels. U149 is so intelligent about its usage of backgrounds, camera angles, and props. The multitude of ways the show riffs off of its mirrored through lines allows for an exceptional clarity in the delivery of Arisu's emotions. There are so many additional cinematic techniques I want to gush about, like the Dutch angle turning the camera as Arisu lets out a rage, or the various fences and bars that convey how trapped she feels. But the highlight of the episode, and maybe the whole season, has to be the depiction of Arisu connecting the producer to her mom. As the producer cries, Arisu stares at a single teardrop. We're transported back into the setting of her insert song, A Dark Forest. She follows along the ribbon that appeared during the insert song and at the start of the episode. This movement is interspersed with her real-life steps towards the producer on the roof. This editing of the scene creates continuity and connects the two settings. Back in the insert song world, water droplets fall past her face. They are filled with images of her mother studying, putting on her business outfit, and working. The ribbon finally leads to a dresser with the mirror, the same mirror she uses to start off her day. As she stares at the mirror, close-up shots of the producer are again spliced in, hammering in the similarities between Arisu and the producer. He is literally the view Arisu sees when looking at the mirror. He is the treasure at the end of Arisu's journey of self-discovery. This buildup was enthralling to watch. The fantastical setting and insert song really sell how this episode was a journey of self-discovery. The incorporation of the mirror in Arisu's room at the end of her journey is a clever nod to how the impetus to change has always been with Arisu from the start. Everything set up from episode 1 comes together to build anticipation for the answer Arisu has been searching for. She looks down from the mirror, but instead of a career survey, she now sees the ribbon leading into an open drawer. That then leads Arisu to a buried memory of lying in bed, seeing her mother cry. But her mother, upon seeing Arisu notice, turns back to Arisu with a warm smile. And using a light painting inspired aesthetic, the show beautifully brings to life Arisu's memories with her mom. The love and happiness in these moments are indisputable, and Arisu realizes she underestimated the affection her mother has always had for her. We return back to the real world, where the producer wipes his tears away, stands up, and gives Arisu a brave smile. The producer mirrors Arisu's mother, and she can finally see everything for what it is. The ribbon ties itself into a neat little bow, wrapping up Arisu's arc. The episode ends with the return to that iconic staircase from episode 1, but now their positions have swapped. From the walk on the sidewalk at the back of the group, to the climactic exclamation from the staircase, the exchange of positions demonstrates how the producer is feeling down and how Arisu has grown. We've come full circle and now it is Arisu giving the producer the push he needs to launch their idol careers. The scene repeats a few of the shots to really emphasize the role reversal. On the stairs, Arisu very clearly states how similar the two are to one another. Kids and adults are really the same. In her own way, Arisu encourages the producer, saying that it's alright to be childish and pursue your dreams. Everyone, regardless of age, is struggling in pursuit of their ambitions. She understands that quest and can finally empathize. And Arisu ends the similarities here and ascends the stairs towards the rest of the girls instead of jumping down. She can now chase her dream unburdened by these self-imposed expectations. The Idolmaster U149 is a stunning exhibition on how cinematography enhances the narrative. There's so much inventiveness in how the show utilizes every technique available to them. The commitment to the mirror motif, from mimicking the shot composition from episode 1 to the inventive use of the show's environments, demonstrates how carefully crafted this episode was and the intent of the creative team to tie the visuals to this mirror theme. The emotions and Arisu's epiphany hit the viewer like a freight train and the power of this delivery can be credited to the cinematography. And of course, there's a ton of fantastic character animation up there with the best shows of the year. Some people may have some hesitation about jumping into an idol show, even more so because of how young the cast of U149 is in particular. But if you look past the glass, I assure you that there's far more to this idol show than meets the eye. <laughs>